In a game like football, which involves all the physical contact, injuries are bound to happen. We look back at some of the most nail-biting, shocking plays on the football pitch that left people struggling for their lives. With some of the instances we are about to discuss here, it is no less than a miracle that these people got away intact. Well, some of them did. Here's a look at some NFL players that almost died. Coming up first is the case that is known to everyone. We are obviously talking about the golden boy of 2018. This person is Alex Smith. Alex had everything going for him that season. He was the first pick. He was having a great season scoring left, right, and center. The universe, however, had some other plans for the poor guy. As he was going for a dodge, the Redskins player was brutally tackled by two Houston Texan defenders. In a cruel twist of fate, that led to his leg being, well, twisted. Twisted so terrible that he suffered from compound fractures that broke both his right tibia and his right fibula. And if that wasn't enough, the wounds got infected, leading to the growth of flesh-eating bacteria. Talk about having problems. While most of the industry gurus sidelined him as gone, Alex continued to give it his all in training and went through 17, you heard that right folks, 17 surgeries just so he could have a chance at playing in the league again. The guy said that his greatest motivation was to have the chance to play with his kids. If that doesn't make you emotional, wait till you learn that the madman did come through on his promise of playing for the NFL again. After his recovery, Smith made a miraculous return to the NFL before finally hanging up his boots in 2021. With this story, you would expect something much more gruesome to follow, and so it does. Next in the terrible injury lineup, we have the terrible aftermath of the tackle that almost killed Seahawks wide receiver Ricardo Lockett. Now, unlike Smith, who made a comeback after his incident, for Lockett, his injury proved to be a career-ending one. In a game against the Dallas Cowboys, the Seahawks receiver received a neck injury so devastating, it almost left him completely paralyzed. In the aftermath, Lockett can be seen lying down completely motionless after the tackle, unable to even move. But he's quickly attended to by the paramedics on the field. And if it hadn't been for the paramedics, Lockett probably wouldn't have survived. After the injury, Lockett made the two fists in the air sign as he was being carried out to show everyone he was okay. But at the hospital, it became clear just how dire the situation was. Due to the impact of the collision, all the ligaments connecting his head to his neck and spine had been torn. Lockett said that he was just one movement of his head away from dying. Such was the damage that it took the doctors more than five hours just to stabilize his head at the hospital before they could operate on him. Otherwise, the weight of his head would have killed him instantly. After an injury of this magnitude, Lockett decided to step away from football, and honestly, who can blame him? He took a back seat and announced his retirement next season. Now, he is one of the biggest advocates for spinal cord damage research and collaborates frequently with the people at Seattle Science Center to discover new avenues of treatment. That is one mighty fine goal, we should say. Taking a walk down memory lane, we have the scandalous incident from 1978 that went down as one of the most formative incidents in changing the rules of the game. Of course, we are talking about what happened to Daryl Stingley. Stingley was on his way to being the very best when his career was tragically cut short by a horrifying accident. Raiders legend Jack the Assassin Tatum was one of the hardest hitters in NFL history. In a preseason game against the Patriots, he went for the big hit on Stingley, who was trying to catch an off-target throw. While the hit impacted Stingley's shoulder, not his head or neck, the blow was devastating. Set to become one of the highest paid players in the league a few days after the injury, Stingley's life was altered tragically. He suffered two compressions of his spinal cord and broke two of his vertebrae. He was motionless on the field and never regained use of his arms or legs. Stingley died in 2007 from an illness brought on by the complications of quadriplegia. This worst part is that Tatum never apologized for what happened to Stingley and never spoke with him after the hit. Talk about lacking guts. Stingley never regained full control of his body and remained a quadriplegic. One of the greatest tragedies in football is when you lose a generational prodigy to injury. And this is exactly what happened to the promising young Ryan Shazier. 
Shazier was on his way to being crowned the best defensive player of the season before his career was cut short by this incident. In December of 2017, during a match between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers, Shazier struck headfirst into another player going for the ball. Shazier collapsed on the field and was unable to feel his legs. He was transported to the hospital where it was discovered that his spine had been terribly damaged. This contusion only meant that he had a 20% chance of ever walking again. The Steelers linebacker went through spinal stabilization surgeries and eventually retired, choosing instead to focus on providing support to spinal injury patients. For some people, injury ended careers before they can even have a chance to properly start. At least, that's what's happened with Destry Wright. Wright's career in the NFL ended as soon as it began, as the running back suffered a career-ending injury in a preseason game for the Steelers against the Cowboys. Wright not only broke his right leg, but his ankle dislocated so badly that he was photographed laying on his stomach while his right foot pointed towards the sky. We have seen that image multiple times, and the crooked foot pointing upwards is enough to give somebody nightmares. Wright endured multiple surgeries, but he was never able to play another game. Now, on the pitch, it's a great quality to be flexible. A flexible athlete can do wonders no matter what role you put him in, but that can't be taken too literally, or you end up with what happened to poor Johnny Knox. We are familiar with his brutal hits on receivers after they catch the ball and understand when an injury occurs. Sometimes, though, it is a simple football play that can lead to the worst results. In a late season game against the Seattle Seahawks, Johnny Knox caught a pass over the middle of the field and then lost the ball on a fumble. As he dove down to recover the ball, he collided midair with Anthony Hargrove, a defensive end also going for the ball. The collision just looked like a really hard hit in real time, but it was the replays that showed how devastating the collision was. Knox's entire back was bent the wrong way. His back was nearly touching his rear end. As he fractured multiple vertebrae and suffered nerve damage and had to undergo spinal fusion surgery. For some months, it was unclear whether the man would ever be able to walk on his own two feet again. Despite quite a bit of rehab, the promising young wide receiver's career was over. We saved the worst for last. This was an injury so influential that it defines NFL as we know it today. Of course, we are talking about the infamous Drew Bledsoe injury. Now, that was a memorable nightmare for those who remember it. It was a New York Jets versus Patriots game, and Bledsoe was the man leading the charge. The charismatic athlete was right at the center of the Patriots revival. Unfortunately, he was also at the center of an aggressive tackle that sent him flying. Bledsoe got up pretty quickly, and apparently all was good, until it turned out it wasn't. After feeling sharp pains and Bledsoe was sent to the hospital where it turned out that he had ruptured an artery leading to the massive complications. Due to the rupture, Bledsoe bled so much that he had to be kept under constant observation. However, this incident had a very small silver lining. Had it not been for this devastating tragedy, we might have never gotten the greatest footballer of all time. You see, as Bledsoe was taken off the field, a little known promising athlete took his name and place. What is his name? Well, he was none other than Tom Brady, and that is how history was made. So that's it and all for today. Let us know what you found the most interesting. We'll be back with more clips for you. Until then, farewell.